I'm working uh, in one of the biggest uh, private clinics in Russia. It's called European Medical Center. I'm a head of nuclear medicine department, which contains uh, a cyclotron facility, which produces uh, radio pharmaceuticals for uh, pet CT, for pet. Uh, pet. Uh, three, we have three scanners, two of which are mobile scanners, and a spec CT department, so it's pretty big. PET CT is not that new, but a pretty new modality for uh, diagnostics. And uh, it takes time to perform some uh, studies to ensure that this is a really good method, that it has uh, influence on uh, management of patients. So uh, last years, last two years, uh, several multi-center prospective studies finished and uh, they show uh, good influence, very important uh, diagnostic value for, for patients with head and neck cancers. Uh, not that much for thyroid cancer, but also um, there is lots of info which grow and uh, I, I will tell about it today on my lecture. It's not standard for thyroid cancer. Uh, not for all types of thyroid cancers, uh, but for head and neck cancers, uh, it should be standard. It should be standard. It uh, should be used for staging before treatment and also for control of uh, uh, at the end of treatment to control the uh, effectiveness of treatment. Uh, it has very, very good prognostic uh, uh, value for, for head and neck cancers. Yes, surgeons are uh, the main, main buyers of, <laughs> of uh, our scans. So uh, surgeons, chemotherapists, uh, radiation therapy, because last year's uh, the radiation therapy uh, has more influence in, uh, in uh, head and neck cancers, uh, especially at late, uh, la uh, late uh, stages three and four. Uh, so there, there is the main place where we work. We have uh, lots of uh, technical issues because uh, it's pretty complicated. We have to uh, uh, prepare our radio pharmaceuticals, uh, which takes uh, not, not that much time, but very expensive and uh, uh, very, uh, very complicated mechanics and uh, lots of machines and then we have to bring that radio pharmaceutical because it has half-life of two hours uh, and uh, but if it works actually the rest is pretty easy it's almost like conventional CT scan. The main thing is uh, to properly use it but it's not the question of the diagnostic specialist it's more a question of surgeon or uh, oncologist who sends a patient for this scan, for this study. That's, there is the main question. That is why I'm here to tell them what we can do for uh, oncologists, for surgeons, how we can help them. The main thing is staging because PET CT uh, shows more specificity and more uh, sensitivity than any other studies for detecting uh, metastasis in lymph nodes. Uh, very small metastasis, even it's, if it's five millimeters, six millimeters, it's, if it's not enlarged, we can see that there is metastasis inside because we see metabolism of uh, uh, of a tissue, not, not only anatomy. That's the thing, that's the main goal of, uh, of a pet. Um, and also uh, we can show distant metastasis. It's not very common in head and neck cancers, but for thyroid cancers especially, uh, when uh, cancer cells, they differentiate when uh, they become uh, more aggressive, uh, they metastasize uh, more often, and we can see it pretty good on PET CT. Um, even, even if CT or MRI doesn't see anything, PET is more uh, sensitive. That is what I want to show them.